Good afternoon. We welcome you to St. Bernadette Catholic Church. We are glad you are here. And to all who are returning or visiting, we extend a special welcome. We're not complete without each and every one of you. As we begin Mass, let us pause a moment and offer one another a gesture of welcome. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Warren Hines and Father Don is presiding. Today's second collection is for parish facilities and maintenance. As a reminder, the second collection will follow right after the first collection and is the basket with the green lining. We are grateful for your generosity. We invite you to sing using the liturgy sheet that you are welcome to pick up at the doors of the church. Please return to the baskets following Mass. Our opening song is The Lord is My Light. Please stand. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O God, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them. But I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot for David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. shepherd I shall not want 
In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, that gives me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. 
My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported, him, reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. There's been a lot in the news recently, on Friday morning, two documents that were given to the church, one to the church and one to the bishops of the church from Pope Francis. And my first impulse was not to talk about it, but I think it's something we can't not talk about. To be silent with regard to it would only be more confusing. So after the example of Jesus in the gospel today, I feel like part of the crowd who are disoriented and confused, but I also feel like one who needs to use their voice to teach. On Friday, Pope Francis issued a motto proprio, a disciplinary decree, returning to restricting the use of the pre-Vatican II 1962 Missal, the so-called traditional Latin Mass, in an effort to unite our church through the way we pray. Bishop Burbage has asked us not to explain this memo or to get into any details until he has issued his public statement. These documents are all online anyway, but I thought I might give a little historical background to the discussion which will begin this week. The Tridentine Mass is the Mass promulgated by Pope Pius V in 1570 after two bitter generations of division from the Luther Reformation. Father John O'Malley, a Jesuit priest and one of the leading theologians on the Council of Trent and the Councils of Vatican I and II, says it was only indirectly related to the Council of Trent, though it is called Tridentine. It was promulgated by Pius V, who was Pope after the Council, who never even attended the Council. Corruption in the Roman Church was exposed and the church sought reform herself with new disciplines and order, including liturgy. The purpose of his promulgation was so that all the churches who were celebrating the Latin rite in the Western church would be united in prayer using the same missal or prayer book. This was the first time this had ever been done. Pius V revised and ordered the rite of Rome and ordered it to be adopted by the entire Western church. Religious orders who had their own rites over 200 years old were not required to change their liturgical practices. At the time of Martin Luther's Reformation in 1517, people didn't participate in the Mass at all. The people had nothing to say or sing. All the responses to the priest were done by the server or the choir. Some of the prayers made it appear or were explained in a way that said the people did not participate in any way in the Eucharistic prayer. This prayer was always said by the priest secretly. Martin Luther was an Augustinian priest who loved the Mass and believed that there should be an emphasis on the participation of lay people, emphasis on scripture and a homily, that Eucharist should be restored to be received under both forms of bread and wine, and that the Mass should be in the language of the people so they could understand what was happening and authentically join in the prayers. 
There were other, other reforms as well. The 1570 Mass was a reform which positively sought to correct errors of the times, but also sought to define Catholic worship so that there would be a greater unity in the Church, but also be clearly distinguished from the Mass Martin Luther had reformed. The Council of Trent had maybe 200 bishops present at its peak, practically all of them from Italy, Spain, and Portugal, countries little affected by the Reformation. The Reformation had, ignite, had ignited four practical or pastoral contro controversies about which the Council was reticent. These were clerical celibacy, the veneration of images, the communion cup for the laity, and the vernacular language. Twenty bishops from France who arrived toward the end of the Council, as well as lay envoys to the Council from the Holy Roman Emperor and the Duke of Bavaria, ardently argued for a change on celibacy, the cup, and the vernacular language. Suddenly, language became the test of your allegiance, and the Council never said that the vernacular was wrong. It only said that the Mass can be rightly and properly continued to be celebrated in Latin. But they didn't want people to be confused. If it wasn't in Latin, it wasn't Catholic. Many people today think of this 1570 Mass as some kind of unchanging ancient Mass that has been taken away from them. This 1570 Mass underwent revisions up until its final version in 1962 and was done away with in 1963 by St. Pope Pius VI and the Second Vatican Council and was finally replaced by a new missal, which was published in 1970. The Council itself and the liturgical renewal of the Reformed Mass, which we celebrate here at St. Bernadette, came at another difficult time in the life of the Church and the world. It was a time of suspicion, the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis, communism on our doorstep, sweeping social and moral change, cultural upheaval, and many conspiracy theories, including the theory that the Pope would take over the country if there was a Catholic president. Is it possible that the suspicion of Vatican II was only an extension as added to the changes with everything else that was going on? The 60s was a decade where the world took many steps forward, but also many steps backward. In 1963, the bishops and St. Paul VI at Vatican II approved a plan for renewing the liturgy. At the top of the agenda was making that Mass express the reality of people's full, active, conscious participation. Also part of the plan were the very items proposed at the Council of Trent, but judged to be not appropriate at this time. An emphasis on the priesthood of the faithful, the people of God, the importance of lay people in the Church, the centrality of Scripture in the life of the Church and in her prayer, an explanation of how the Church is still vital and relevant in the modern world, and the same hot buttons, vernacular language and use of the cup for Holy Communion. A new Roman Missal was produced according to the plan proposed by the Council. It was approved by Paul VI and published in 1970. And like the Roman Missal of 1570, the new Missal was required for use by the entire Catholic Church that had a history of using Latin. The Missal of 1970 has been revised several times, most recently, you might recall, in 2008. My childhood memories of the church before Vatican II are very, very clear. We had hand missiles, and if you remember the little hand missiles that had the English on one side and the Latin on the other, these, these hand missiles themselves were considered liberal innovations at the time, and trying to keep up. We prayed our holy cards from the funerals of all the great aunts and uncles who seemed to be dying regularly when I was young. In our parish church, there was no choir singing a glorious Mozart mass, maybe a holy God at the end. The priest, for the few parts of the mass which were prayed at a level you could hear, went so fast you could never keep up in your book. Even the Our Father was prayed in secret by the priest at a level that the, that the people could not hear. That's why we used to call going to Mass hearing Mass, not praying or celebrating. Early childhood memories become more clouded over the years, but I remember one of the first Masses in English in my parish was the Mass when I received First Holy Communion. I remember my amazement at what the words meant. 
I remember the feeling of connection. And I remember at the end of the consecration prayer, my brother Bob, who would have been only about three or four years old, shouted, Amen. Looking back now, I think it is a wonder and a blessing that the Mass can touch a three- and a seven-year-old. Father John O'Malley says it takes 100 years for a council to be received. We're almost at 60. We have, a long, we have come a long, long way since then, and we'll go forward needing to pray along the path together. I have come to understand over the years that sacraments are windows to the eternal moment when Christ is forgiving, is healing, is uniting, is giving us his body and blood, is offering himself to the Father. The Holy Spirit is being poured out on all the cosmos. In thanksgiving by actively recalling his saving action in the Mass, we aren't making Jesus present to us, which was Martin Luther's objection. He said we don't offer Jesus to the Father and crucify Jesus over and over. Of course, this was a misunderstanding. He offers himself, and we are united with him in our self-offering communion. We don't make him present, but we make ourselves present to him. I've never read this anywhere, so all of this could be wrong. In making ourselves present to him, by offering ourselves with the bread and the wine, the one thing that we can do with our free will is to give or not give ourselves. We are caught up in and united to the offering of Christ to the Father, which is for all time and all places, once in time, but also one act extending always. Full, active, and conscious unity and communion. Now let us stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Grateful that God shepherds and guides us along the path to salvation, let us now join in offering him our prayers of petition. For the faithful, that we may be witnesses to the joy of the gospel and the leaven of grace in our world, giving witness to God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civil leaders, may they work to ensure that all people are cared for and able to live their faith in peace and freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, may they be strengthened by our prayers of support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children and youth of our parish, that they may grow in faith, hope, and charity through the good example of their parents 
and the support of our parish family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, physically or mentally, especially for those who have incurable diseases, that they find healing and care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and eternal life for all who have died, that all may be gathered into one communion in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we ask that you hear our prayers offered by your servants through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied, varied offerings of the law, accept this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory 
as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save your love, the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command, and may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, 
with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, Tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. me and heal my weary soul. You lead me 
by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have said me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you all please be seated for just a moment. I'm very excited to formally introduce for the very first time our new director of youth ministry, Sarah Giffen, who's joining us and she's going to speak at all the masses this week. So Sarah, welcome. Good evening. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Sarah Giffen, as Father Don just said, and I'm the new director of youth ministry here at St. Bernadette. I recently moved here from Cleveland, Ohio, my hometown, where I taught high school theology. I learned a lot in my first year of teaching, including that I have a real heart for ministry, which ultimately led me to St. Bernadette. I'm so honored to serve the young people here. In addition to introducing myself, I'm here today to share with you some exciting news about St. Bernadette's youth ministry. Stephen, the assistant director, and I have been planning this upcoming year's ministry schedule, and there will be many opportunities for 6th through 12th graders to grow in their faith while making friends and having fun. Specifically, we will be offering new large group programs for middle schoolers and high schoolers that include fun activities, faith formation, and discussion. Edge nights will be offered for 6th six, six through 8th graders twice a month, and life nights will be offered for 9th through 12th graders every Sunday. Both of these programs will begin in September and follow a school year schedule. Stephen and I also hope to grow this ministry so then in time we can offer small groups, retreats, and lock-ins. Every one of the appropriate age group is welcome and invited to join us for Edge or Life Nights. In order for our middle school and high school programs to thrive, we want to create a core team of volunteers who are willing to invest their time and talent into serving and ministering to our young people. If you're passionate about your faith and willing to share it with others, we want you. There are various opportunities for everyone to get involved. Our primary need is for core team members who will help to run our program nights, but if you feel as though you don't have enough time to commit to weekly or monthly program meetings, there are still many opportunities for you to get involved. If you're interested, I will be available outside after Mass with signups to answer any questions and to share more about our programs and the roles in which you can help. Please stop by, I'd love to meet you. You can also contact me by phone or email, which you can find in the bulletin. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to the possibility of serving alongside you. Thank you, Sarah. We're really excited that you're here at this parish. You, can't, you don't know how excited. I was telling her that there was, there was one time, I think one time in the 26 years I've been a priest, that we had a really successful program. It was down in Fredericksburg. We had just hired somebody for the, as director of youth ministry, which didn't work out. They were only there for about a month. And once you've started the year, it's next to impossible to find somebody else to be the director of youth ministry. All, and we had about 60 teens that were a part of the program. All their parents showed up and they started doing barbecues. They started doing uh, nights where the kids would all get together. They would all do the cooking. We had such strong support from our parents and from other adults in the community too, not just parents that they came and that program was success, a success for several years after that because they just got involved and they came and they cooked a dinner and, and let the youth ministers do what youth ministers do best. So I encourage all of you to, to, get, to get involved in this program. I think that of all the people in our parish, it's our youth that we need to accompany the most on this journey to, to belong to the church. Today's a prayer to, returns Monday night, 8 p.m. Mark your calendars plan to join us on the third Monday of each month at 8 p.m. for beautiful, simple, sung prayer in the tradition of the Teze community. We invite all Christians in the area to join us and to pray for unity. There's a typo in the bulletin. It says every third Thursday. I'm, I don't know what I was thinking. It's every third Monday. 
Religious education registration is still open on the parish website. Tell your friends to register as soon as possible so that we can plan for the fall. And we are still looking for altar servers, ushers, and catechists. If you would like to be a volunteer, please call the parish office and sign up because we want to restore these ministries to their full activity. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go and proclaim the Gospel of the Lord. Crucify.